It was amazing what we do for clout. It's amazing what we do for recognition or just for a little bit of attention. I mean, think about it. Think about what some of us do. You got that dude that shows up in the club on Saturday, popping bottles of Cristal, thousand dollars a bottle of Cristal. But when the bill come, he holding the bill up to the light, like oh, hoping the numbers is gonna change or something. And you know why? Because he's partying on Saturday, but on Friday he lost his damn job. He owes baby mom over three to four thousand dollars worth of back support. His baby mama chasing him down because her baby needs a new pair of sneaks or some new clothes. But he in the club popping bottles of Cristal. He's stunting for the gram. He's stunting for Facebook. He's celebrating what? He's celebrating the fact that he ain't got a job no more. That he don't own a house. Live with his mom. Don't even own a car. Barely own a bank account after he pay his bill. Because if he pay his bill, with the champagne that he bought, the bank account going to foreclose on that account because he's going to overdraw his account. But you're celebrating, right? You're celebrating that. You got the same people who sit here posting pictures of their food. Don't you hate when people post food on Facebook? That nasty bomb food, the macaroni be all dried up. Because you know, they don't use cheddar in their macaroni. They use that pasteurized milk and cheese. You know that cheese where you take the cheese slices where the plastic going, it's not real cheese. It never melts right. You probably made grilled cheese with it today. And they put that on the macaroni, put it in the oven, ah. And they serve their man that macaroni and cheese. The chicken be pink as I don't know what. When you bite into the ch chicken, you don't see blood, but you still see pink in the chicken. Then they posting pictures on Facebook like they really did something. The green beans all dried up and overcooked. And your so-called friends don't even tell you, like, oh, you might want to put that chicken back in the grease and fry it a little longer or put it back in the oven because that chicken look un undercooked. They sitting there telling you, they lying to you, like, yo, man, you're going you gonna to keep him. He's going to be there forever. He got a girl that can cook now. Girl, that macaroni chicken look good. Can I save me a plate? When well, reality, they saying, man, yo, you see that chicken? That dude is going to be in the hospital after he bites that chicken. You know COVID right now, right? You know COVID going on, so you know you can't have no visitors in the hospital. He going to be in jail. He going to be in the hospital with salmonella poison after he bite that food. I don't know what's wrong with her. I don't know why she thinks she can cook. I already told her she can't cook. She ain't dead tell you nothing. She ain't tell you nothing about your cooking. She the one sitting here praising you, hyping you up, thinking you can cook when you can't. But that's your friend though, right? That's your friend. And you do it for clout because you post it on Facebook because your friend keep hyping you up, telling you can cook, and none of the friends on your friend list got the heart to tell you, you can't cook. That's not the way you make baked macaroni and cheese. That's not the way you do it. You don't put a slice of cheese on the, the macaroni noodles in the store in the oven. That's not how you make it. That chicken is still pink. But they ain't telling you the truth. Then you got people... They go to work and they think everybody they talk to at work is their friend. Everybody's your buddy. Everybody's your best friend at work. That's my bestie right there. No, it's not. No, it's not. We need to get a paycheck. We need to get a paycheck. That's not your friend at work. But you go to work and you think everybody that you work with is your best friend. You think everybody's your buddy. You call everybody your friend. Tell them all your personal business. Tell them about your kids and how they acting up at school, how they never stay on Zoom. Like every time you turn to them and you look at your kids, they're supposed to be on Zoom. They laying on the floor, so this is how they be. This is how your kids be. You're supposed to be on Zoom and be like this. I have a hard time getting up with it. Your kids are all down here when they're supposed to be doing the computer. Teacher got to tell them, yo, can you get in your seat? That's what they're doing. That's what your kids doing on Zoom. Don't sit there and look at me like that because your kids doing it too. My knees hurting now trying to get up out of the seat. I'm old, people. I'm old, but I had to do that. But that's how your kids on Zoom. You sitting there telling all your coworkers about how your kids acting up on Zoom, thinking they're your friend. They're not your friend. They sitting there talking to the next coworker about you. You tell them all about your man and stuff, how he cook, you know, he bought you that new Michael Kors bag, the new coach bag, and now they sitting there plotting on you, dude. They see him when he pick you up with them flowers, now they plotting on you, dude. But that's your friends, though, right? But we got to do it all because we're looking for some attention. We all need some attention. You got them people who buy a car. They bought that new Toyota from CarMax. You know, their hubcap shined up, looking all shiny. They got the chrome hubcaps, not chrome rims, chrome hubcaps. They hubcaps, but they keep them clean, though. They keep them clean, people. They got that chrome hubcat shined up. They got the big red ribbon on the car, Max. They pay too much money for the car, but it's okay because they got a new car. And they got to stunt and let you know that they got a new car because they think their followers and their friends really love them. Y'all really care about me. They all hype like, oh, girl, you got a new car. Yeah, dude, you got a new car. What's up? Yeah, I'm happy for you. Yeah. Back of their mind, they sitting there like, yo, man, you know Charlie still owe me $200. How the hell Charlie get money to buy a new car when he still owe me $200? Let me call Charlie up right now. Charlie, pick my phone up real quick. Let me call Charlie. Yo, yo, Charlie. 
Yeah, it's Victor. Yeah, what's up with the $200? I see the car you posted on Facebook, man. I know you, you got it now. Let me get let me get my $200. You ain't never going to hear from Charlie again. You got some people sitting there talking about, yeah, that's a nice car and all that, but then right behind your back telling you how you overpaid for the car. How that car is going to decrease in value. They not your real friends, but what we do for clout. We do all this for recognition. I mean, my sister told me, you know, I need to loosen up. I need to be more transparent. Like, how more transparent I can get? If I get any more transparent people, I'm going to be visible. I'm going to be a ghost if I get any more transparent than I am. Hell, I told y'all all kinds of stuff. I didn't got cussed out for stuff I told y'all. I was at a hospital and got cussed out for some of the information I tell y'all. People really get pissed off at me, but I don't care because I'm going to be honest with y'all. I live my truth because as long as I live my truth and you live your truth, nobody can use your truth against you. That's some real talk. Think about it, people. If you're honest with yourself about the hubcaps, the fact that you can't cook macaroni and cheese, the fact that you can't stunt the club because you owe your baby mom some child support, you know, you honest about yourself about everybody at work ain't your friend. If you're honest and truthful, then nobody can use that truth against you. That's fool for thought right there. You do the dishes. But the point is, sometimes you just got to be a ghost. Sometimes you just got to be that person that's not posting a car on Facebook. Or Instagram. You gotta be that person that's not posting your play up on social media. You gotta be that person who's not sitting there posting up after work with your new boo. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just gotta keep that to yourself. You gotta keep a level of privacy in your life. Not everything should be so transparent. You don't gotta tell everybody your life story. I know they say you can put your story on Facebook, but they didn't really mean your life story, people. They didn't mean that you gotta put your life story. You gotta tell them about your kids. That your son can't read, that your daughter is in about to graduate high school, and she still can't count past 10. That's not what they said to put in your story when on Facebook. No, that's not what they said. You know, you just put little videos, little picture, little stuff you want your friends to know about. But we're too transparent. Well, we should be ghosts. We gotta be ghost people. What I mean by ghosts, we gotta learn to have a little secrecy. As fellas, my ladies, my ladies, I know y'all love posting the pictures of y'all nudes now. You know, y'all get y'all little uh, silicone in your breasts and your butts. You want to show off your new body and all that, and it's all great and fine. I'm sure all the gentlemen out there appreciate all your sacrifice, all the pain it took for you to get that surgery, all those butt shots. They appreciate all that, my ladies. They love it. They love seeing those nudes and those pictures, those only fan pages. They love supporting you. But you got to leave something to the imagination, ladies. Especially if you're trying to keep a man. Because I often hear women talk about, man, I can't find a good man. Well, that's because you're walking around with a damn thong on. Everybody know what you got. There is nothing left to the imagination. The man knows you down to the bare bottoms. He knows the color of your underwear. Like, there's nothing to the imagination. So when you're sitting down on this man at dinner, he already know the bare basics. He ain't worried about trying to figure out what the color of your underwear look because he already seen it. And he know everybody else has seen it, but then you're the same person talking about you can't find a man. Do that same thing. My days, you got to leave something to imagination. You got to leave something to be creative about. Don't let everybody know what you got and what you're working with. It's cool to be comfortable with your body. I know you know you did, you've been working out in the gym, doing those squats to get your body right. But it don't mean you got to advertise it to everybody, especially if you're looking for that right man. You know what I'm saying? You gotta give them something to give them some secrecy. Sometimes you just gotta be a ghost. Sometimes you just gotta be a ghost. Now I ain't saying you gotta ghost them. There's something different. I ain't saying you gotta ghost people, but you gotta be the ghost. I mean, sometimes you just gotta be a little secretive. Fellas like a little secretive. We love that, don't we, brothers? Don't we, my fellas? Don't we like a little secretive? If you married right now, I'm telling you, your wife made you, you know, do a little running, had made you do a little investigating. So that you get her. I know my wife did. Made me do a lot of investigation, man. I ain't gonna lie to tell people. Damn, they had to stalk my darn wife. I had to steal her phone number. What kind of crap is that? I mean, I'm a good dude, you know? I hell had to steal her phone number. Gotta talk to her about that. But anyway, you need a little bit of that, ladies. Not so much transparency on the first date, on the first time to see you. My fellas, listen, I know that y'all want to sit here and stunt. Y'all want to pop bottles and y'all think. All women are attracted to money. I know a lot of us think that you know what success, power is what attracts a good woman, attracts and keep a woman. 
You know, they gotta see us stunting, looking good, looking all dapper. You know, we gotta show off the money, the nice car. We gotta be in the club popping those bottles because see, if we ain't popping those bottles, we ain't getting seen. If we ain't getting seen, we ain't getting attention of ladies. So, you know, we gotta to sit here and live above our means to show off. Even though we live with moms, even though you live with your moms, you know what I'm saying? Your mom still folding your clothes, still washing your underwear. You still sleeping in the pajamas with the feet in them. I understand. You still doing that, but see, on social media, you telling the ladies, yo, I'm ready to buy a house. Lying your behind off. Lying your behind off. You telling the ladies, yo, I'm going to be in the club popping bottles. You telling her you're a club promoter. You ain't no club promoter. You handing out flyers. That don't mean you're a club promoter because you're handing out flyers. The truth is you got to be real with your women. Sometimes if you ain't in position to where you want to be because you want to succeed and find that woman and be able to display a level of confidence, a level of success. And sometimes you just need to be a ghost. Even in that situation where you're being successful, success can be envy. So if you get a little too arrogant, you get a little too out front, stunting and showing off your success, it can breed arrogance. And arrogance can breed enemies. Envy, enemies, close, right? So you got to be careful. You got to be a ghost sometimes. Sometimes you got to lay back. You know, let that right lady see you. So you sitting at the bar, you ain't got to get a whole bottle of Cristal. Get you a nice capacity, some honey. You know what I'm saying? Just sit there and relax. That lady going to seek you. She going to see the calmness, the peace inside your soul and get attracted to that. See, a woman can smell. She can sense success because you got that nice cologne on. You got that Gucci cologne on. You got that Burberry cologne on. You got that Prada on. So she can smell that success. Like, literally, she can smell that success. Sometimes you got to be a ghost people. Sometimes when we at work, right? This is the big one. This is the big one right here when we at work. Because we all want to get that attention at work, don't we? We want to catch the boss's attention, right? We want to catch the boss's attention. We do anything for it, even if we mean snitching on our coworkers. <laughs> Some of us snitch on our coworkers, and you got to be the manager's pet. You know what I'm saying? Like you was a child in school, you used to be a teacher's pet. Now you're the manager's pet, okay? So you snitching on your coworker and everything, doing everything you can for attention. And see, they try to get the attention of the boss. You know, they want to get that raise. They want to get that pat on the head. But some of us go to work and we get a little too comfortable with a coworker. You know what I'm talking about. You're a little too comfortable. You go home, you talk to your husband, you tell him, your husband say, yo, how was your day? And the women do this. They're like, yo, oh, my day was good. You know, me and Lisa and Vicky, you know, we went out to lunch. And, you know, we was talking about Lisa's man. I told her she don't need him. Then I start telling about how little uh, George Jr. was showing off in school and what he was doing and how he's acting up on Zoom and how the teacher had to get to him. And I was hoping it was on mute when I was yelling at him. But, yeah, I had to handle that. And you sitting there telling all your personal business. Talking about how you came home from work and your man had the bubble bath running for you, had the rose petals leading up the steps, how he had dinner cooked for you, kind of like dinner. You tell them all that, and then when your man come pick you up, yeah, your little friends, you know, Lisa, what's the other one named Vicky? They're sitting there looking like, yeah, 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 smiling again. Yeah, nigga, you mess up, we'll get that dude. Uh -huh. Yeah, you got a nice car too. Because they can smell that success, but see, sometimes you got to be a ghost at work. See, sometimes we think that in order to be successful at work, in order to get that promotion, in order to get that raise, that we also always need to be seen. We always need someone to give us some kind of recognition. We always feel like we need to be in front, always on the platform. Somebody got pass on back or pass on here because a lot of times that's what we need to feel like we're successful. And we understand that, right? Because our children do the same thing, and we can learn so much from our children. We talk about how we behave at work, how we behave on social media. Our children do the same nonsense. And I'm not just talking about on Zoom. I'm not talking about just school. Sometimes your children, man, do stupid stuff like this. Like It's not stupid, but this is what they do. You sitting there watching You sitting there watching family night. Everybody sitting there watching family night, eating dinner in the living room, eating popcorn, whatever you do, wherever your vice is. You sitting there watching the age of Ultron. And randomly, your kids start saying ABCs. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. What the hell is wrong with you? Like, what the hell are you saying? ABC just break out with the ABCs in the middle age of Ultron. Nobody asks about the ABCs, didn't ask them, they know the ABCs, just break out singing it. So you tell them, like, yo, shut up, stop singing the same ABCs, trying to watch Ultron. The kid get quiet for a second, then just bust out of nowhere. Bert and Ernie live together. Like, what the hell is going on around here? Yeah, I know how to get to Sesame Street. Well, if you know how to get to Sesame Street, get your ass on the Sesame Street. Skip your mind up Sesame Street then. You didn't kick your kid out the living room. Because the point is, your kid ain't interested in watching Age of Ultron. Your child wants some attention. 
Your child wants some recognition. They want to know that you see them. So they start singing ABCs. They start telling you it was one plus one and start counting. They miss counting. They can count all up to eight, and they go from eight to 13 to 24 to 16. They're skipping numbers, and you, they want recognition to make you feel, to make them feel like, yo, my mom and dad will see them do a good job. And just like, you know, people do on social media, you pat your kid on the head, even though they didn't skip letters in the ABC song. What is it? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, Elemental, P. What is it? Elemental. What is it? Elemental. Elemental is not in the ABC song. But you found me like, you did good. You hear that? You sing the ABCs. No, they didn't. They didn't sing it. The point is, your child even looks for recognition. And you know, we learn a lot from our children because our children mimic us. We look for the same recognition at work. We go on a job talking about how the spreadsheet was done. I don't even know what the hell we're talking about. We're dead wrong. But we're still trying to sell that we know what we're talking about. Because we want recognition, right? We want to be seen. We want to be felt. But we don't want to be ghost. Because ghost means I can't see you. It means my presence is there, but I'm invisible. But the reality of the situation, and wait for it, here it comes. We're so transparent with who we are, everything about our lives, we ultimately become ghosts anyway because people can see clearly through us. They can see clear through you. You so damn transparent with your life, with your bad cooking, with the fact that you're buying cars but can't afford to pay somebody back that loans you money, that they see clearly through you. You so busy trying to stunt in the club, trying to pop bottles of Chris style, trying to make people think you richer than you are, but your baby mom can see right through you. You're transparent. So ultimately, when you try to hide from being a ghost, when you try to hide from people see, not seeing you, when you're looking for recognition, sometimes the recognition you want to find is the one that you don't want to. Because see, some of us ain't patting our kid on the back head when they sing the ABC songs. They talking about Elemental P. Bitch, they ain't how you sing the damn song. Sam, Sam, I ain't telling you hit your kids. Don't hit your kids. It's not a good thing, okay? But some of y'all do, though. You smack your kid. You know what I'm saying? Kid interrupts you. The movie Age of Ultron talking about Bert and Ernie live together. Like, what the hell I got to do with anything? You getting mad, ready right? to whoop your kid behind. Like, you interrupt the movie talking about some damn Bert and Ernie live together. I don't care what Bert, Bert and Ernie do in their house. You need to worry about cleaning your room. You talking about Bert and Ernie, you need to clean your own room. You know what I'm saying? But see, sometimes when even you're looking for recognition, you're looking for attention, and your pure attempt to get someone's attention, you get the wrong type of attention. That's why I say all attention is good. No, it ain't. Because somebody smack your ass upside your head, pardon my French, sorry, I'm cussing and everything, got a little loose. Somebody smack you upside your head ain't good attention. You walking around with your big chain on your big watch, you stunt gray gold, jumping your escalate, somebody knock you in the back of your head, take your watch and chain. Is good? Is that intention still good intention? Now you tell me. Is it still good intention? When somebody driving off your escalate, you sitting there on your behind in water from the rain, you getting rain going, now you got to walk home? You all cold like this, trying to keep yourself warm. Is it still all attention, good attention? Is when you put that chicken that's undercooked and still pink on social media, and your baby dad, your husband, your boyfriend, your new boo eat that chicken, and next thing you know, he laid up in the hospital with salmonella poison. Is all attention, good attention? Because people gonna sit there and talk about it. They gonna talk about the words gonna spread. Like, oh, remember that chicken? Remember that chicken Lisa posted on social media? You know he gave, you know he gave Eric um, salmonella poison. You know he's up in the hospital. Man, he almost died from that poison. You know how things get watered down. It go from he's in the hospital. He had diarrhea. He was vomiting. So he almost died. He caught COVID when he was in the hospital. He got COVID from a chicken. How the hell you catch COVID from a chicken? Like you caught swine flu from a chicken. It just goes all up into that because that's how it gets watered down by the time it gets. From the first person down to the 50th person who's spreading something. But is all attention still good intention? You tell me. Is it? Is it good attention? You tell me. How about when you're up there posting those pictures of my ladies? Y'all posting those pictures of y'all and y'all, your t-shirt and y'all panties on. Remember that old song? It was it Dina Howard? T-shirt and panties on. Y'all posting y'all pictures on now on social media and all that. And then somebody point out the fact that you got a little bit of cellulite on that leg. Then they start talking about, ew, look, I see a stretch mark. All attention, good attention? You tell me. When dude, when a good dude don't want to talk to you because when he get in a relationship with you, somebody pulling up your old social media page, he hanging out with the boys, guys night out, and he like, yo, man, I think I've met your girl somewhere. Yeah, you ready to marry her? Yo, I think I know her from somewhere. Then they pull up old pictures of you on social media that was 10 years ago when you was trying to be an IG model. 
All attention, good attention at that point. Fellas, because I ain't going to forget, I ain't going to be sitting here hard and lazy. God called the dudes out too. All attention, good attention. When you sitting there posting the, posting up in the club, popping bottles, you showing off, acting out, talking about you ready to cop a new Bentley, you ready to cop a new house, going, God going well, you still living with your mom. You ain't got a bank account because you overdrew your bank account, so you ain't got that. Your car got towed. You living with your mom, okay? Lost your job. You sitting here stunting. You didn't convince this woman, you know, that you this guy, but she always trying to wonder, like, why the hell we always staying in my house? And why you ain't never going to work? You always talking about this your day off when you're on vacation. This is the longest vacation I've ever seen. Why am I always paying for stuff? She start putting two and two together. She runs into your baby mom when she going to buy your favorite cereal at the supermarket. And your baby mom tell you, like, yo, can you tell him that he still owed me $5,000 in back child support payments? That his son or his daughter needs some new shoes? If they got to play in school, then all of it blows up in your face. All the faking you've been doing on social media just blow up in your face. When your baby mom tell you, well, do he take a bath at your house? Because, you know, I bought him a brand new underwear, brand new t-shirt, and brand new towel six months ago. And he ain't used near one of them yet. I bought him a bottle of soap, a bottle of Axe soap three months ago, and that bottle's still full. That sponge I bought him to wash up with still dry. It's been three months. The toothbrush don't look like you ever seen toothpaste. Like, is it still all attention, good attention when your baby mom calling you out to the girl that you was fronting and stunting for? You tell me, people. Sometimes you just got to be a ghost until you get yourself together. You got to sometimes understand that all attention is not good intention. You got to understand that everybody you work with and you share your life with are not your friends. We co-workers. We both there for the same reason. We both trying to get a paycheck so we can pay Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile. The electric company, we trying to pay our water bill, we trying to pay our rent or mortgage, we trying to make that car payment on that new Toyota you bought. We all there for the same reasons. We ain't come to work to make friends. People tell me, yo, you too serious. You're damn right, I'm too serious because listen, I'm getting tired of paying Verizon money. I'm tired of giving them my money. I'm tired of living paycheck. Check. Look, I'm tired of it. You know, you get tired of it, then you start getting serious. You start getting serious about like, look, man, dig this. I'm tired of sitting here budgeting my account and living by a strict budget and robbing Peter to pay Paul. And then you start getting serious to a point where you're like, yo, I got to get serious about my money. I got to get serious about my goals. I got to get serious about success. I got to get serious about accomplishing things. I got to get a little bit more serious because at some point, you got to ask yourself, I mean, reality has to kick in to say, yo, dude, my ladies, what the hell are you really celebrating? Because it ain't success. And maybe in your eyes, you feel there is a level of success. Because some people do. Oh, I got 100 likes on Instagram, 100 likes on Facebook. Oh, on TikTok, I got 1,000 followers. You celebrating that. But Facebook ain't cutting you no check. Instagram ain't cutting you no check. TikTok ain't cutting you a check. And if they are, it ain't much more than a few pennies. So you can ask yourself, what are you celebrating? You celebrating the idea that someone's showing you some attention. Is that what it's all about? Is that what we came down to? Is simply trying to seek attention? Man, listen, we got to be humorous. We got to crack jokes, and I got to be funny, and I got to be more down earth. But trust me, I ain't going to be more transparent than I am. Because if I'm more transparent than I am, then I'm going to be invisible. You're not even going to see me no more. I'll tell you the real. I'll tell you the truth. Listen, I ain't sure coating the fleet. I ain't got nothing to celebrate right now other than being alive. And I ain't popping bottles for that. Because the way I celebrate me being alive and me living another day is by continuing to be successful, continuing to be happy, continuing to assist and help others, continue to uplift other spirits and try to help them know something that I know, share the information that's here. Because, see, I look at it like this. I'm simply a vessel. I'm simply a vessel. And like any vessel, I'm only of use when I'm full. Uh, you ain't hearing me, though. You ain't getting me. See, I just went all script on y'all, didn't I? Went all script on you, didn't I? Think about this for a second. Where you at right now? You in the kitchen? In the living room? If you in the bathroom? Look at that toilet bowl roll, that toilet paper roll. See, the toilet paper roll has use to you until there ain't no more toilet paper left. You in the kitchen? See, that bottle of syrup, that bottle of ketchup, that bottle of mustard, it has use to you until it becomes empty. Where you at in the living room? What you got with you? You got some Hennessy with you? You got some water, soda? What you got with you in there? You got a glass of soda? 
that glass of soda, that bottle of water, that bottle of Hennessy has used to you until it becomes empty. See, now we can repurpose things, but a lot of times we don't because, see, if you repurpose things, you got to have a level of creativity. And I'm going on the subject for a second, but we're going to go right back to Goshen. Walk with me here. Walk with me, people. Because, see, this is about being serious. See, a bottle of water has a purpose as long as the bottle of water is full. Then once that bottle of water is empty, what do you do? You toss that bottle in the trash. Once that bottle of mustard is empty, you toss that mustard in the trash. When that bottle of Hennessy that you're getting drunk off is empty, you toss that bottle of Hennessy in the trash. See, because those things only work as a vessel, similar to you, similar to me. See, if you talk about me being serious, it's because I'm a vessel, people. I'm serious about my job. I'm serious about my purpose. My purpose is to sit in front of this camera and to talk some sense into you. Some people don't want to hear it. Some people don't. Some people sit here and listen to it and they eat up every single word I'm saying because they know, like, yo, man, he's talking that million dollar advice for free. He give me million dollars advice, million dollars worth of advice for free. So I'm going to eat all that up because, see, I can sit here and keep playing a lottery, but that ain't helping me. See, he's a vessel, and because that vessel was full, I'm going to sit here and keep drinking of that vessel until that vessel becomes empty. But you ain't getting it, though, people. And once that vessel becomes empty, that glass bottle becomes empty, what does it become? It becomes hollow. It becomes see-through. It becomes transparent. It becomes a ghost. See, sometimes we got all work towards being a ghost. See, sometimes we want to be seen so bad. We want to be seen so bad. And we think we don't have a purpose unless we're seen, unless we're visualized, unless someone's paying attention, unless someone's patting, they're patting us on our back or patting us on our head. But we don't realize we need to give ourselves recognition before others give us recognition. You're looking for recognition on social media, but you need to look for recognition yourself. Maybe you should check and make sure your chicken is cooked before you put it on the plate because it still had a little pink on it. Yeah, I know. I keep talking about this chicken. Somebody going to be mad at me today, but I understand. See, my fellas, before you sit here going out and looking for that new lady, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to start that new romance. Make sure that your children took you care of. Make sure that soap that your baby mom gave you is at least halfway empty. So when she catch your, your new girl in the store buying you that new box of Captain Crunch, she can at least said you use half the bottle of soap so you was taking a bath sometimes. At least you change a t-shirt once. Make sure you do that. My ladies, if you're going to show off your body, if you're going to show off the body, just understand that, you know, dudes are only going to see you as a sex symbol. And they're going to look at you and they're going to expect sex from you. Now, I don't mean, that don't mean that they have the right to disrespect you. That don't mean they have the right to force themselves on you. But it is open up the avenue for them to look at you and see only sexualized. They're going to sexualize you. They're going to look at you and when they're eating dinner, they're sitting there licking the fork and licking their lips. The only thing they think about is sex. They ain't hearing a word. You coming out your mouth talking about how you want to go to college or how you want to be a veterinarian. All that goes straight out of their minds because all they can see is that picture on social media and your t-shirt and your panties on. They see a Victoria's Secret when they're looking at you. You got to leave something to imagination. Sometimes we got to be Casper, the friendly ghost. Sometimes we don't need to post our car on social media. They'll see you when you drive by. If, why do you need them to know what kind of car you're driving? They'll eventually see you when you're driving by in your car. They'll see you riding low in your car. They'll see, your coworkers will see your new boot. Your boss, if you're working hard and doing your job and you're successful at your job, your boss is going to recognize your hard work. And I know some of us feel like they don't recognize, they just give us more work. That is recognition that they can depend on you. And if you got a good manager, got a good boss, then they'll not only recognize you, they will pay you in time. Remember your chips. Remember your bargaining chips. Remember your negotiating chips. Because see, those negotiating chips is not you dancing and playing in their face like Sambo or snitching on your coworker. It's showing that, yo, you can depend on me. I might need you to pay my bills, but you need me more to get this work done. Because I make you look good. You think about it, people. Sometimes you just got to be the ghost. Lay low, lay back, relax, and keep succeeding. Life is all about business, and it's time to be serious, and it's time to celebrate. See, for me, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate when I reach my level of success. I'm going to celebrate when my kids graduate college. I'm going to celebrate when we reach a million likes, a million views on my show. I'm going to celebrate when I start seeing people, and y'all walk me up into the streets and tell me, yo, Alan, Alan the Great, 
The words you did on that episode really changed my life. It helped me increase increase my value. It helped me see my value. It helped me accomplish my goals. It helped me say a plan, make a plan. It helped me see myself, see my potential. See, that's what I'm going to celebrate. But I ain't going to pop no bottles. I ain't going to run the social media. I'm going to celebrate. And you'll see me smile and laugh and happy. But I'm never going to become so transparent that you can't see me. But I'll always be a ghost. I'm around. You just don't know it. I want to thank you for joining me for another episode of Past the Present Podcast. Welcome to 2021. I hope it's better than 2020 was. And I hope you learn, love something. We've got a great year ahead for you. A lot of great guests. A lot of great laughter. We've got a lot of healing. Great subject. So I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this episode. Hope you enjoyed this uh, podcast. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me. So until next time I see you people, remember to like and comment, share this video, and to stay tuned. Peace.